The second race of the season in the Blancpain GT Series Endurance Cup brings us to the UK. We're at Silverstone in Northamptonshire. It's a circuit that's been on the endurance calendar right from the very first season. It's a circuit that's never been very kind to Audi, but it always delivers some fantastic racing. Last time out at Monza, it was a safety car start in very heavy rain. And Berko Portolotti's Lamborghini led the bulk of the opening stint as everybody had to tiptoe round in the spray, all hunting for traction. Inevitably, it meant there were some very jumbled orders to be seen. And big drama as well, as Nick Homerson's Ferrari was absolutely drilled going down towards the first chicane. Bortolotti led to the first round of pit stops, tyre changes, refuelling key, but then the road started to dry and there was this dilemma, do you go on to slicks or do you go on to wets? One or two of the drivers made the right choice, some made the wrong, we all added to the drama of the races. Very hot tyres came off the cars as the pit stops cycled through. The road then did start to dry, the pace of the race quickened, but in turn, one or two of the teams started to have tyre problems. TF Sport, for example, had a puncture and more would come late in the race. But as the road dried out, so the race quickened and also the whole structure of the order changed as some of the cars that were having strife earlier moved up the order. Not as much strife as Jim Clark had though, as he tangled with Ramon Voss, two badly damaged Mercedes off the road when the Acker ASP Mercedes running out of road at the second chicane, enabling one of Rover Racing's new Porsches up the pass. At Santalop, number 25 was looking good. On the second pit stop, Christopher Hauser got behind the wheel and that car was suddenly in the ballpark for a win. It was leading, being chased by the dynamic motorsport Porsche. But then Hauser had a tyre go down late race. He limped to the pit lane, but any hope of a race victory had gone as a new set of wet tyres went onto the car. Klaus Backler, along with Andrea Rizzoli and Zayed Ashkanani, suddenly was looking for a race win. The dynamic motorsport Porsche led as the Mercedes were squabbling behind. It was set to be Porsche's third ever win in Blancpain endurance races. They won the very first at Monza, they'd won at the Nürburgring too. But here to start the 2019 season, Dynamic Motorsport came out on top. A Porsche win at Monza. It was a shock result, it was a popular result for an utterly delighted team. Black Falcon had a good weekend at Brands Hatch last weekend, and here Yelma Berman rejoins the team looking for an outright win in this second endurance race. This championship is all about scoring points, and uh, this is what we're aiming for, just to be up in the, at least top five uh, like consistently. And uh, it's very hard because it's extremely competitive. You have to be you know, on it in qualifying. In a dry race, it's very hard to come from, for example, P20 into the top five. Uh, here we're trying to qualify in front and uh, stay there. Bentley has also won at Silverstone in the past. That was the older generation Continental GT3. This is the new one. And British driver Alex Buncombe is eager for a win on home soil. Historically, the car's gone well here. The, the race results for the car that I've seen over the past few years, they haven't you know, got the end result for the car, but um, you know, it has been fast. It is fast on this circuit. We just need to get the setup right on the car. We were wet testing yesterday again, so I just need some dry running in the car. I've done three laps this afternoon in the dry, and, and that's been it. So um, really want the sun to shine on, uh, on Sunday morning, and we can hopefully get the car up there in quali. Garage 59, this year running Aston Martins, has an entry in the AM Cup. Chris Harris is back on board this weekend, filming commitments having kept him away from Monza, and he is here looking for a good result. But tough opposition, so what's the aim for the weekend? Win it. We should have won it last year, Leo. We should have won it last year, um, and our, our spa wasn't very good. So this year, we're just going to take it steady, the points will come, make sure we have a good result at spa, finish it. Never done that before. Um, and enjoy it as well. We're going to have some really good fun, but I want the big pot this year. We've got the slightly smaller pot, but I want the big one. American-based Brit Taylor Proto is new to European racing this year. He's got a good pedigree back home in North American Lamborghini Super Trofeo racing, but now applying his trade in these endurance and sprint races within the Blancpain GT Series and the Blancpain GT World Challenge. So, Silverstone is a new venue for him. What are his chances going to be this weekend in the Lamborghini? It's really been an amazing experience so far. The level of competition is so much higher than what I'm used to, so I'm really being dragged up to speed. It's been an outstanding learning experience. 
Of course, the tracks we go to are absolutely legendary too. I have F1 circuits, so they're vested in so much history. It's really appealing to the, ra the racing geek inside of me. So you're looking down onto a very busy grid indeed here at Silverstone. We have 48 cars good to go and it's been a very strange last few hours. We had driver changes last night and even after qualifying we've had driver changes as well because Marvin Kirchhofer, one of the Aston Martin drivers, uh, not very well today and he has decided and the team has agreed that he really isn't going to be a great asset to the team if he's not feeling well. So Maxi Martin will do a stint in both of the R Motorsport Aston Martins, like the good old days of cross-entering in two cars. The Silverstone Grand Prix circuit looks like this, with the first sector taking you through the Beckett's S's to the Hangar Straight, the middle sector having some fast bits and some very twisty sections, and then sector three being the Wellington Straight, Brooklands and Luffield up towards Woodcote and the end of the lap. Right, let's have a quick stroll down this grid and see who is where. Christian Engelhardt is going to be the man starting on pole position in number 63, Lamborghini, and there he is on the inside line, so the better line for the rolling start, with Peter Scotthorse starting alongside in a Tempto Audi 55. On the second row of the grid, 519 is Font Pereira in his Lamborghini from the rival FFF racing team, and it's Jordan Pepper starting in Bentley 107. More Lamborghinis, so you've got three of them nose to tail on the inside of the grid here. On the inside of row three is 563, Dennis Lind, number two for Audi, that is Alex Riveras lining up alongside. Then it's James Pull starting 78, the Silver Cup Barwell Lamborghini. Nico Bastian in the Silver Cup is alongside in the Acker Mercedes. On the next row of the grid, Shea Davis with his Audi from Team WRT, Mikhail Alioshin's Ferrari for company. On the next row of the grid comes 25, Stephen Pallette in the Santa Lock Audi. And 108 Bentley, Alex Bunkham goes first. Behind them is number 19, Lamborghini of Arno Santamato. And alongside him is Nicholas Pola, Nicky Pola for the Daiko Lazarus Racing Squad. Philip Frommenweiler starts the Honda, and he is going to be next. There he is, 15th on the grid. 16th is Ivan Pereras with his Audi, run by the Phoenix team. Then Dean Stoneman starting in the number 12 Lamborghini, operated by Ombra Racing. Ahmad al Harfi as ever, starts in the Oman Racing with TF Sport, uh, Aston Martin alongside. Stuart Hall goes first in the Gulf liveried GPX Porsche, and Diego Menchaca starts 20th on the grid for FFF Racing Team. Then you get to the uh, AM pole, Adrian Amstutz going first, Neil Stevenart, Santa Lock Audi in Pro-Am is alongside. Next on the grid, Derek Pierce for Team Parker Racing, Chris Buncombe in Pro-Am next. And then it's the uh, French run Lexus, Fabian Barthez for Tech One Racing uh, will go first. Nick Homerson in a different Ferrari look, it's not the black and white, it's a red and white out of AF Corsa's fleet. The black and white car being repaired from last weekend. Antonio Forne Thomas and Raymond Boss come next, ahead of Jake Dennis and Jean-Luc Bobelic. And remember, change of driver now in 76 to accommodate Maxi Martin. Chris Harris starts 188, and Pierre Eretz Ferrari, another Am Cup car, is for company. Next on the grid is the pseudonym Steve Paro for Rinaldi. Mark Ross down with, again, a driver change in number nine. Philip Eng being brought in to replace Philippe Steveny. Maxi Martin will go first in 62, ready for a stint in 76. He's got Renault Coupons lining up alongside him on an all Belgian row of the grid. Then Mauro Engel and Dennis Olsen. Now you're into the drivers that didn't get a time in. So Mauro Engel, one to watch. Dennis Olsen, one to watch. Mercedes and Porsche. Next comes Roman Dumas. Uh, Michael Meadows lining up alongside him. Uh, again, two drivers that didn't get a time, or two cars that didn't get a time in Q1. So they're worth watching here. Deb Gore, the American, has Krum Ledegar alongside him at Garage 59. Then it's Hubert Haupt and Nick Foster with the Attempto Audi, the sister car to the Scott Horse Brothers car at the front of the grid. The Monza winning car of Andrea Rizzoli, Dynamic Motorsport, 45th on the grid. Jens Liebhauser comes next. Ricardo Sanchez with an ABS problem and Renat Salikov with an infringement complete the grid. We are about to go racing. Hold on to your hands. Round two of the Blancpain GT Series Endurance Cup comes there now towards the end of the formation lap. Who is it going to be that's on their toes? Engelhardt or Scott Horst on the front of the grid. Peter Scott Horst slightly ahead as the cars go up. The lights are still on red. The lights go green. We're racing. It's a good start by Engelhardt. And trying to go with it. There look, he's from Pereira and also Dennis Lynn on the run now. Down towards Cops. Lambo, Lambo, Lambo. It's a one, two, three for the Italian cars. And down to fourth then is Peter Scott Horst. Yes, yeah, so that was a very good start from those drivers on the right-hand side of the track because Christian Engelhardt got the advantage. Frank Pereira right up to his rear wing and likewise Dennis Lind in the third of the three Lamborghinis and Shorthorse, Peter Shorthorse got slightly stuck out, hung out to dry on the outside of Copson. We were talking about 
basically how do you get through turn one on the opening lap of a race? Turn oh. round the other, turn round, and that's going to come back in the middle of the pack. Hopefully nobody's going to collect it. It's an, an awful situation. Cars one way and the other. Contact on the exit of Chapel. So oh, that's Neil, contact. Yeah, Neil, Neil Stephen Art was the first one. It was even Pereira's that spun. We're going to have a safety car because there is mayhem coming onto the hangar straight. The incident that you were predicting has happened later from other cars. They, they had to dodge and avoid. So there's one with huge frontal damage, which I had a horrible feeling was a bit garage 59-ish in the livery. There's a Rinaldi Ferrari off the road as well. So Neil Stephen Art is in the middle of the circuit. It was his car, I think, that was the first one we saw spinning. Ivan Pereira's was the one spinning at Beckett's, but that second accident all came about by having to take evasive action. We've got yellow, we've got safety car, understandably, right from the start. Safety car deployed, John. Yes, indeed. I mean, three cars that are in major need of being craned away because they are not movable. They've got suspension damage, certainly wheels off some of them, and heavy contact to the left and to the right in the exit of Chapel. So everybody now under the safety car control, and they will slow down as they come up to completion of a first lap. That's Michael Meadows, the 88 Mercedes out of the race. Com Ledegar, Aston Martin out of the race. Pierre Eret out of the race. So four retirements even before the end of the first half of the first lap. They didn't even get to the end of the first sector, never mind the end of the first lap. Right, so look, there's Stephen Art. He's, he's having his own spin, punch a tyre, and then wait for what happens behind because suddenly there's contact behind him. Wait to see a green Ferrari come across the road. So who hits him? Eretz involved. There well, then the Ferrari hits something blueish, yeah. and then comes across the road and drills Stephen. Well, the, the Ferrari hits. I can't, is that the Aston Martin he actually hits? Is that Com Ledegar's car that he hit? The, no, no, no. The, Ledegar's on that well, side. That's, is that Ramon Vossi's Mercedes? That may well Seven, be the Ram car, 74. Certainly, the, the Ferrari hits something to his left, which is this car. Yes, yeah, it is. It is. It's Ramon Vossi. It is. Yes. Yeah. So the, the so Aston. That's, that's the Aston there. That's it, Ledegar against yeah. the, the parapet. So this car is still. It's the walking wounded. But uh, it is still actually able to make its way round. One would assume it's made its way into the pit lane. We didn't actually see it. So safety car will be in at the end of this lap. Uh, down they come to the end of Vale. 55 then, Peter Scott Horse in the first non-Lamborghini in the order. The Audi R8 running fourth. We will go racing this time then. So then the cars now come down towards Brooklands. The safety car will peel in this time. And it's heading towards pit in as now Engelhardt having lagged back gets ready to go and he will accelerate to Luffield now. But Frank Pereira is not going to let the German get away. He is determined to make sure that his Lamborghini is going to be attached to the rear of the 63, the full city car. So the 519 and the 63 are going to be very close as they come down into start finish and into cops. So through they go, almost nose to tail there. Pereira in a big, big hurry. He wants to get on with this. He wants to try to find a way through as the cars go up towards Beckett's now. This, lap number eight, we're racing again at Silverstone. Green flags fly, and the three Lamborghinis already look are oh, getting away from Schrockholz to his fourth. Pepper fifth, and it's James Paul's Lamborghini, the Silver Cup Barwell car, running in sixth place. Yeah, you get the feeling Christian Engelhardt is not quite as committed at the restart as Frank Pereira was. We saw Pereira really almost under the rear wing into Cox and trying not to let the 63 Lamborghini get away. But these three Lamborghinis are making a clear break. By the time they get into Stu, they've probably picked up the best part of one and a half seconds. And Jordan Pepper in the Bentley, which you have to think is probably the quicker of these two cars, but being quicker and finding a way around the 55 Audi isn't going to be an easy task. You need to be careful when you're making your plan to make an overtake as we watch the four, the black Falcon Mercedes that started again at the back of the field trying to get its way past the two Rover Racing Borchers. So Roman Duma just ahead. Then you've got Mario Engel, Dennis Olsen is next up. These, remember, three coming up from that second group, if you like, at the back of the grid, putting a move against Fabian Barthez, and all of that means they're fighting for 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th places. Whoops, well, well, off the road there. Yes. Alex Buncombe, wasn't it? Now, has he got a problem? He's going slowly. Well, that was all happening on the edge of the Abbey. That might be a puncture. I think it could be the left front. Yeah. So, so again, carbon fiber shards somewhere around the racetrack. We don't think there's any contact. But that's cut down the left front, and of course, that's the reason why turning into Abbey, which is a right-hand corner, he just basically washed out across the racetrack over the grass and made his way back eventually onto the track up in Village. So that, here we see on board with Alex Bunker. He's down the inside, think he's going to get the corner. Audi comes across the left front of the Bentley, goes down. The Audi goes off to the left in the gravel. Now, that will be adjudged whether it will be considered to be a racing incident. Certainly, it looked to me, from what we could see on board the Bentley camera, that Alex Bunker was sufficiently alongside the Audi to rightfully think he could claim the corner, but the disagreement is there's the result of it. 
there, the two Rover Porsches trying to wriggle their way up through the traffic. So Nick Homerson's Ferrari being mugged as up the inside goes Roman Duma. And now Dennis Olsen following him through the two Rover cars working together here. One is the pioneer forcing the gaps open, the other one follows through. Yeah. Up past the wing and Maxime Martin busy on the lights trying to distract Nicky Pola turns then now through the right at Abbey and the left at Farm. It may have a little look down into finish if we go back to this battle for fourth place. So again, the only now for the first time going defensive as we see Jordan Pepper trying to, but he's getting squeezed. Now the idea must not make the cutback. So all of a sudden there's a battle that we have been anticipating, but can the Bentley hold position? He's been squeezed to the outside. This is all quite fair. But if you're in Jordan Pepper's position, you're going to be swearing under your helmet. I think he's done enough now. He's forced the ID wide on the exit of Lovett. Gets up alongside. He's got the high ground. One for the Lamborghini following through to take away that position as well. Oh, way wide coming out of chapel. So now he's up to fourth. Do you want to have a quick phone call to Stephen Kane and ask whether it's strategy one or strategy two? Uh, I don't think they'll have a clue. <laughs> They're probably sitting in the pits watching the action. No, they're working it out. But it is interesting that your teams are now reluctant to open up what they've got two strategies we didn't know what those two strategies are but that's the level of competition they do not give anything away why give your enemy a free pass why your competition why give them a free pass so on board now 22 Philip from and Viola on the back of number 12 Dean Stoneman the British driver and he's about to make a move as they go down towards Cox Corner this is the replay through he goes on the inside line so Shea Davis Audi gets a drive through for causing a collision with Alex Buncombe's Bentley. Also, he's had a pit stop for a puncture, and now he's got a drive through penalty. So now we've got quite a number of cars diving for the pit lane because we've just had Nicky Polar coming in, and there's another Audi diving down the pit road as well, which I'll come to in a moment. There you see Ivan Pereira's going through on the inside from the gain ground. Dennis Lynn getting close to the back of Frank Pereira, whose Lamborghini, the back end, stepped out in that transition from the middle part of Beckett's to the right hand. So it's got Dennis Lind into a position where he might think about throwing it down the inside. He's having a look at it. Can he, he's done it. He's done it. Frank Pereira wisely has conceded track run. Yeah. That's good team play. And up the inside goes Jake Dennis, winner in Blancpain here last year. And he's going to go through. He's got the inside line, Stuart Hall goes wide, and that's going to put Dennis Olsen in the box seat as well to get through at the end of Vale. The two Porsches run absolutely side by side, and Olsen's got the job done. Yes. It's Engelhardt and Lind coming through together. The gap was over a second. The gap is nothing at all as they go with a tender. And the problem for the leader, rear puncture, turn. puncture. Left rear, left, left rear. rear. We could see there was a sudden reason for Christian Engelhardt to lose that one second. So Engelhardt's got to do a full lap, it couldn't have happened in a worse place. But that's what to do. You see suddenly the rear tyre, whether it's pumped, you can see the smoke coming from it now. And as he turns in the tyre, there's no air in the tyre. He's got little, little control now. Whether that was a tyre that got cut or whether the tyre had picked up something around the circuit and cut down through the carcass of the tyre. Lind leads into the pit lane is 76, out of the pits goes 107, also in has come Roman Duma. So Jordan Pepper is in, Peter Scotthorst is in, Jake Dennis is in, Roman Duma is in. So in it comes, high drama. Dennis Lind leads from Pereira second, Alex Riveras for WRT Audi up to third. We've got, had not only this drama with the leading car, but also pit stop. And look, as in has just come Engelhardt, there is Lind to go through. So the lap is lost just as the car parks. Oh, another puncture. Porsche 99 with a puncture has come in, look. So 99 down the pit lane. That was a Dennis Olsen car. So that's another one with a, a punctured tyre. Oh, there's the lead car in. Yeah. 444 in the gravel at Luffield. Yeah. Next so the... Jens Liebhauser is in the gravel bed. Yellow flags wave. What's that going to do to the race now? Everybody's going to dive into the pits at the early... Full course yellow. We go full course yellow. Well, that's probably the wise decision because to try and extract a car from the gravel, which is so close to the edge of the racetrack. So everybody crawls through. Some coming in, as you see, still to serve the stops. But what we need to see is where 519, now Phil Keane, has rejoined. And 519 and number two Audi are the ones that on the pit stops, I think, have now got out ahead of 563. So there is 519. There is number two Audi. So because they have pitted under full course yellow conditions, they've lost less time and therefore they come out ahead. So it's Keen, Compaq and possibly even Davidi Rigon as well. Those that have just pitted under full course yellow conditions have stolen a march, it would appear, over the 563 Andrea Caldarelli Lamborghini.
Here they come then, the pace car, the safety car as it is, will peel in. And you've got the lapped Lamborghini out of sequence there. So that car has lost a lap under all of this, and he's trying to fight back if he can, but he's about he, to get mugged by Compa and get everybody else. He's just got to get out of the way because this battle for, for the second place is going to be intense. So the advantage goes to Phil Keane, who's got a car which is out of position between himself and second place, but there's Molina who's lining up to try and move down the inside of Eusekiel Perez compact. Made the move, but wasn't sufficiently far alongside the Audi to make it stick, so had to back out of it, and therefore in danger of finding himself falling back into the 19th Lamborghini directly in the wheel tracks. So we're racing again, and it was 27, the car of Nicholas Pola. Now Chris Richard at the wheel of it. There, up towards the Beckett Sesses, they sweep then on this restart, an hour and 43 minutes to go here at Silverstone. Round two of the Blancpain GT Series Endurance Cup and the leader, Phil Keane, on to hang straight and still the Compan has not been able to lap that Lamborghini because he's busy defending from there up the inside, Miguel Molina, who can't find a way back. This is perfect for Keane. Absolutely, Phil Keane's got a clear racetrack. He can do whatever he wants, where he wants, as often or as little as he wants. He's got everything to his advantage. So here they come, up towards Village. Miguel Molina trying to gain ground. Also, Simon Gachet trying to gain ground at the expense of Lucas Mauron, but Mauron is on the back of the Ferrari and a dive up the inside there. Look, because the next Lamborghini tries to bust its way by. That's Calderani, and Calderani goes through, and also here comes the Mercedes diving through as well. Pace is being dictated by the Audi. Everybody else is being stacked up behind it. The Ferrari doesn't seem to have quite enough straight line performance here, coming down the end of Hangar Straight to make a move down the inside. If you're going to commit to do it into a corner like Stu, as is ever the case, you need to make the pass really before you get under the brakes. If you don't do it, then you're always going to be in that zone. Dives down the inside into Vale. Will it work this time? Side by side and forces forces the Audi to go up the inside. And again, he's been mugged literally by two of the Lamborghinis. Now on the outside of club, never a great place to be. He got close to the pink farm there on the outside of the club, didn't he? He did, he didn't have to pay to get back in. So Maron goes through, Calderani goes through, and Berman comes up to have a go now. So Compact dropping like a stone. He's fifth, and he might be sixth in a moment as Berman is crawling all over the back of him, and behind Berman is the recovering Simon Gachet. So this is Calderani's view. Finally, Molina is through the traffic, so oh, is Calderani, so yeah. is Maron. Yeah. So Calderani finds a way past, couldn't get up the inside of Lucas Mauron. Now, can the Lamborghini do anything about the Ferrari? Can Bonnie to get away? He's got to make up six seconds against the race leader, and down they dive. Heading towards Brooklyn's then, these rival Lamborghini teams looking on. And this is the view of the fourth place car, Andrea Calderani, as he breaks and he goes left at Brooklyn's. Oh, big that's, shunt. That's Taylor Five Proto. Five. Taylor Proto served that drive through for being short on the pit stop, and he's had a big off coming out of Cops up towards Beckett's. We're about to go full course yellow, full course yellow now, and everybody slows right down, and here's what happened, John. And let's watch it. Oh, how did he get off there? Did he get a tap? Wow, that's a huge that, was, oh, that was a big, that was a very heavy impact because he caught the end of the barrier and what there's a, 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 I would so it used to be, it used to be railway sleepers, now it's probably a concrete wall. That was a nasty impact, just did he skew well, off? Remember I said he just served his drive through, he was coming out of the pit lane, so he was on the pit out line. Somebody that was on the racing line, unsighted perhaps, cut across and tagged him. We had, of course, many of these drivers getting into this stint under full course yellow, and it's been affected by full course yellow as well, as the cars then now come through the right-hander of club corner. Pace quickening. We'll be good to go back racing very shortly. Been perfect day. Oh, what's this? What is this all about? That is Ramon Voss in the Ram Racing Mercedes. I know, I know. He saw one of those Silverstone hairs. And he tried to dodge around. He tried it. to dodge around the Silverstone hair. What a gentleman. Right, we're going to go racing here. So let's worry about the leaders because they are absolutely together. The pack unleashed. We're racing. Phil Keane comes across the line then now, chased by Miguel Molina in second place. Third is Andrea Calderani as they dive down towards Club and towards Cops Corner. Fourth is Maron, fifth is Compact, sixth is Berman. And there, as they turn their way through, is the new race leading car. And Calderani will be, he was smarting because he got caught out in that first round of pit stops at the point when the safety car came out. So that car, to me, albeit that Phil Keane pulled an 11 second lead, but. Andrea Calderelli is somebody who I think at 563 has got admission. And 
to stow, they can't then, so it's still Keen ahead of Molina, and everybody else now trying to work out where they can make a dive, and there's one coming up the inside, 76, Aston goes through, Nicky Team gets himself up past Dennis Dupont, and Dirk Werner is in a big hurry in the 99 Porsche, so there's an awful lot shuffling around here, and still you've got 27 Lamborghini, a lap down, out of sequence, getting there through Beckett's ahead of Simon Gachet. You know, if he was a magician, he could just make himself vanish, but he's not, he's, he's stuck in the middle of a barrel, and, I mean, in fairness, doing what he can do, but it is causing a little bit of mayhem for those that are around. Here comes Berman once again. This is for fifth against Compan as they get to Stowe. Danger is they're going to get caught by Lewis Williamson and others if they're not careful. Look, there's the Stracker Mercedes. It's nearly there. So Berman for Black Falcon has got to get on with this. To the outside line at the end of Vale. Can he stand his ground and get the inside for Club? No, he's gone too deep. He's going to go wide. He's up the curb. And here comes Williamson. Thank you very much. I'll have that. Through he goes into six. Take that any day of the week. Well thought out by Lewis Williamson. He read it coming out of Stu. Saw what was going on between the ID and the Mercedes Benz. Put himself in the right position. Berman compromised himself at Bale. But look at this group of cars <laughs> four wide coming up into Abbey Corner. Is that on board with Jules Gunion? It's Andy Suchek in 108, and he's just got past Zayde Ashkenani. So for 18th place, Andy Suchek goes through. The Spaniard gets ahead of the Monza-winning Porsche. Coming down, hanger straight. Again, Calderoni goes one way, feigns one way, then has to come in behind the 72 Ferrari of Miguel Molina. But just, you can, for some reason, Calderoni seems to have more bites in corners than the Ferrari has, but he can't translate that. And down the inside this time, well, he forced the issue and forced the Ferrari to go wide, try to defend. Now, is he going to lose a further position? He has. Lucas Maron goes through. So Molina down into fourth. Calderelli on a mission, isn't he now? Andrea Calderelli is closing on Phil Key. Now, who do they bring into the pits first? Do they uh, bring Calderelli in to get him out of the traffic, or do they get Phil Keane in to give Calderelli one clear lap in the lead? Ordinarily, the driver that's leading it would be his team that would have the option. So it would be offered to Phil Keane. Is Phil Keane, has he come? Yes, it is. Phil Keane going to come in to give way to Giovanni Venturini then. So that's going to be interesting in that last stint. We've got 57 minutes of the race to go. Calderelli's in as well. So both of them come in. John, you said what you don't want well, I don't, is I'm, both I'm, in at the same I'm time. Double stacking in a very restricted pit lane. There you can see oh. that the Calderelli's got to dive very late to try and get the car in to get it square. Another team having to move the car around to get it. Look, they are. That's, but, but, I mean, what is the, I, I don't understand now. But how they're going line's going to have to go backwards get round it, that's exactly. a waste that's of time. Don't double stack your cars. If you're going to do that, at least have I'll the tell second you what, car behind the first, not in front. Maybe I should be the team manager of that team, and the team manager should be the commentator in the booth alongside you, David. Well, this is one way of swapping the order over, isn't it? Because you get 5-6-3 ahead of 5-1-9, because 5-1-9 is stuck. Couldn't there make it, there it up. There it is. Couldn't make it up. Push it backwards. They can't they barely get the car. Wow, dear me. So that's well, Giovanni Venturini who goes, stays ahead of 563, and there you've got number 19 Gerhardt Ferraza under attack from what looked like being Dries Van Thor. Back onto the circuit, second is going to be Ferraza, third is going to be Van Thor. So 563 Mappelli drops from second to fourth on that stop. I'm, 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 yeah, I've, no, I've no reason to believe that they had no other option than to bring their two lead cars in at the same time. Here's the pit stop, so 519, leading car comes in, 563 arrives second, and that car, 563, is the one with the slower pit stop. Yeah, but they're having to manoeuvre the car. Look, the car is too far out into the pit lane. Now, can they get the airline around? And you can see the compromise that was then, the 519 has got its work done. They've got all the space around the car to work, except they're blocked in. Now, look, Van has got past Ferraza, so he's managed to find a way through. But 76, that's Maxi Martin now, isn't it? He is in the game as well. So the order continuing to change, not only with the pit stops, but with the pace on track. What I don't see, John, in this leading gaggle, sadly, as you see there, a challenge made by Mappelli to get past Ferraza, are the Rover Porsches that have been up and down the order and, for the moment, seem to have fallen out of the ballpark. So we started with the jumbled brood, we've ended up with a very jumbled race order. 63, Mirko Bortolotti, by the way, 22nd, just to touch on that story for a moment. 5-6-3, which is Mappelli, all over the back of Dries Van Thor. 
and he now can't think about attacking Hawksworth because he's so busy defending from that Lamborghini behind. More overtakes in the traffic behind as you go back on board here with Mappelli almost into the back of the Audi. For some reason, that this night, this 563 Lamborghini was mega quick at Monza. It's been mega quick. It looks to me has always been of all the Lamborghinis, it's the one that we've been on board with, we've seen that has got consistently good grip and balance all the way through, but Dries van Thor, late in the brakes, diving down the inside, not quite, Venturi not quite able to do it, but he has got the quicker of the two cars, finding a way through the ID with Dries van Thor behind the wheel will be another challenge. There's the number nine BMW in. So Philly Van to get in. Mechanic falls, drops the tyres. Oh, that's and a penalty. penalty. Yeah, that's, a bit. that's a penalty. Time the the guy is OK, obviously, yeah. with the for the, the guy working on the car, but she's in trip over things. Drive through penalty to car nine. Dropped wheel uh, in the pit lane during the pit stop. As we had seen, so Alain Adon confirms a drive through for number nine. BMW as Miguel Molina's car in the hands of Davide Rigon lines up to have a go. Tighter line out of La Field, he's on the back. Rigon in second in the Ferrari. Venturini in the lead in the Lamborghini, but for how much longer? As they come through club, much, much tighter exit, maybe carrying a little bit more speed at the second part of the exit of club. Again, it's the same fundamental problem that Mapelli has is trying to deal with Dries van Thor. He's not really providing any opportunities whatsoever for the, the fifth place Lamborghini to make a move. And all it would take is one safety car period now and everybody to bunch up in that leading line. Through the traffic goes Van Thor, through goes Mapelli. I'm coming Mapelli through. Mapelli may well be the winner out of this little battle. I think Dries van Thor had to be aware and cautious. He wasn't sure if the silver or the, the gold Lamborghini not right under the rear wing. Will he make a move down the inside? Dries van Thor is on top of it. He can break that little bit. Later he's got on up the inside. He's done it. Good move. Excellent move. And Dries van Thor was wrong-footed. He thought he had got it, but he's trying to come back, coming down into Vail. Needs to be careful he doesn't tag the back of the Lamborghini. Can't get any closer than that. So the race leader compromised coming onto the straight, but it's a Lamborghini with that horsepower ahead of a Lamborghini with that horsepower with a Ferrari that's got the grip. Down to stow, they come, nose to tail. Giovanni Venturini hands on to the race lead. Davide Rigon looks for a tighter line. Is there going to be an opportunity at the end of Vale? Because this is where, going into club corner, we've seen Venturini run oh so wide, lap after lap. He still has the advantage. He still hands on to the race lead through club. Davide Rigon takes a tighter line, but they both run wide over the curb, and Venturini gets the horsepower down now. Down they come into the left of Brooklyn for the 67th time. And again, look, Regal much quicker through the corner, up the curb this time. Now there's more desperation, and there's a gap on the inside. This is the move. Davide Rigon goes for the race lead, and this time he has done it. He's got his nose in front coming out of Luffield, and Davide Rigon goes through to lead at Silverstone. He has worked so hard for that for over 20 minutes, and finally he has gone through. So Davide Rigon takes over the race lead. Drive through penalty to car 99 causing a collision with car six in turn 14. So 99 is Matt Campbell in 11th place in the Rover Porsche. Six that was tapped into the spin is Gabriele Piana's uh, Black Falcon Mercedes down in 21st place. So there is 99, Matt Campbell will serve a drive-through penalty. So another frustrating race for that Rover Porsche. The sister car of Mathieu Jaminet is sixth, chasing after Dries Van Thor. So it's here is a repeat. It's about positioning, getting your car into position as the team on the pit wall, and there, look at the faces, Phil Keane and Frank Pereira, they are gutted. Rigon already 1.3 seconds up on Giovanni Venturini, who in turn is three seconds up on Hawksworth, and he's 1.7 seconds clear of Marco Mappelli in fourth place. Matt Campbell is tumbling down the order as he serves the drive-through penalty now. I mean, I think the first two are pretty much a done and dusted deal. The battle for third and final podium positions between Hawksworth and Mappelli gap on the last lap, 1.7 seconds. So, Davide Rigon getting away, and just as he had stared at the back of Vecherini for so long, so the same is true of Felipe Fraga on the back of Matthew Drudy. A long line of cars onto Hanger Straight, but Davide Rigon then is away and gone for the race leaders here at Cops. You see the TF Sport Aston go through, and number five, the Phoenix Audi. 
Finlay Hutchison at the wheel of it goes through with, you'll see, Tom Onslow Cole behind, uh, leading the Pro-Am competition with Raymond Valls. It was Raymond that had his moment under the safety car earlier, wasn't it? Well, he Tom... knocked the sign, you can yeah. see the blob outside just on the right of your picture. But he managed to drive off track, ping it, and continued on. But when you put Tom Onslow Cole into this car, suddenly the car's body language becomes totally different. Yeah. And Tom, who was rally crossing on Easter Monday, very different discipline in these one litre motorbike engine RX150 buggies that he occasionally races in. He's got lots of his rally cross mates here to cheer him on and it's all coming good because Tom Onslow Cole is 23rd, he's about to become 22nd, but crucially he leads and could be on for a win in the Pro-Am class. As there, number four is Lucas Stoltz in eighth place currently, up from pretty much the rear of the grid. He was in that last wave of cars, wasn't he? Well, we've got 12 minutes to go. What a race. Yeah, I did. I thought I was seeing uh, Stephen Kane. I was going to say he's within 0.4 of a second, but the camera didn't quite pick him up. So Stephen Kane trying to get himself into position to move that Bentley up into would be potential eighth position as we see this battle going on. And it's getting very, very on tidy with this group of cars. Mixes and matches of cars that are being lapped and some are being overtaken. And Matthew Drudy way wide in the Audi, wasn't he? He was nearly on the Danford Road there, coming out of Club Corner. But Stephen Kane here hustles on and running in. Where have we got him now? Eighth. Eighth place. Ninth. Ninth place, right. Ninth place, yeah. yeah. And he might be under attack, but there's traffic to worry about as well. So through they come. He's got Christopher Hauser up behind him as well as hesitating. Stephen Kane, ninth, Christopher Hauser, tenth. And they are absolutely together. So Kane on the defensive rather than the attack here. Second, third, and fourth, and getting themselves together. Venturini, Hawksworth, and Papelli are starting to form a little battle pack. And the 63 Lamborghini, which seems to have. I can't see his portal lot, he's driving the car. Oh, it is indeed. So he is made up. I mean, having had that car lead the race in the opening stint, then lose the lead through a tyre being cut down. Finally, finally, finding himself in somewhat more of a respectable position, but it's been a long, hard afternoon for that grass racing Lamborghini. Dennis Lind nervously looks on. Andrea Calderelli likewise in the pit bunker as they watch what's going on. And a look to the inside, but again, a Mercedes cuts across and defends its third place. Jack Hawksworth at the wheel of it. Mapelli then has to think again. Hawksworth keeping Mapelli at bay, but at the same time, he's also nearly on the tail now of Venturini for second place. So to the end of Hanger Straight comes Mapelli. He has a tentative look to the inside of Hawksworth, but he can't find a way by there. Jack Hawksworth under attack, and now Mapelli up the curb on the inside. There's contact, and the Mercedes spins. Mapelli takes evasive action, but Jack Hawksworth is backwards off the road. He's not just lost one place, he might lose more. Let's see. Past him goes Van Thorpe. How many other places is he going to lose? We're looking at Dennis Lynn, but what we need to see is how many places that Mercedes is going to lose, and also what damage Mark in Mapelli's car has picked up, because there is damage at the front of it. The car clearly is not handling properly anymore. Here is the replay. So, down to the end of Vale comes 519, Giovanni Venturini, Mapelli sees a gap, goes for it, he's up the kerb, there's the contact, that's enough to unsettle Jack Hawksworth who loops it, but damage done to the Lamborghini, but how many cars got past Jack Hawksworth? We'll have to know at the end of the lap, we've got a Lamborghini limping to the pit lane, which I fear is Marco Mapelli's car. There he is, he's still OK. There's a, a very slow Lamborghini that's just come into the pit. No, no, it's Bortolotti. Mirko Bortolotti in the pit, and a tyre possibly has gone down on 5.63 because he's way out wide going through Luffield. Has Marco Papelli got a problem, or is this just suspension and steering damage, the geometry damage after that contact? No, it's OK as far as tyres are concerned. Suddenly the car snaps sideways, but he's about to lose what is third place to Dries Van Thor. Look, so the order is Regon. Then Venturini and Marco Mapelli goes wide at Cox. The car just does not have the bite anymore, so past him goes Van Thor. And Matteo Jaminet on this last lap will come up to have a go as well. So into the pit lane, it was Marco Portolotti's Lamborghini with a problem late in the stint. That incident is being looked at straight away between Mapelli and Hawksworth, and there you can see the car does not want to turn anymore. Marco Mapelli loses out to Matteo Jaminet, so that's fourth place gained by the Porsche. It's fine in the straight line, but it's through the corners where it does not want to turn anymore. So there's certainly some damage. And there is Jack Hawksworth, who might yet get back ahead of Mapelli. Won't give him back his earlier third place, but it would right or wrong, wouldn't it, if he could get past Mapelli, whose car is clearly damaged, clearly hobbled. I thought a moment ago at Stowe, it had liquid dropping onto 
a tyre maybe, and oh, Jack Hawksworth says, come on, get out of my way. Not impressed at all, and he gets right into the back of the slow Lamborghini. It has been a long time in coming, but for SMP Racing, finally, the win is here. The AF Corsa operated Ferrari of SMP Racing. Miguel Molina, Miguel Arashid and Davide Rigon win at Silverstone. A delighted team, and you can understand why they've come so close in the past. Second to Giovanni Venturini from Pereira and Phil Keane. And third is going to be the number two Audi, Dries van Thor, Ezequiel Perez, Colt Pank and Alex Rivera. So still no Audi win at Silverstone. That's the first Ferrari win here, incidentally, in GT terms. And for fourth, Matteo Jamenez, Porsche. Now, what about fifth? Jack Hawksworth comes home in fifth place. Marco Mappelli, sixth. And then seventh, up towards the line. Lucas Stoltz is ahead of Gerhardt's Ferrazza, a change on the last lap, but Ferrazza hangs on to win the Silver Cup, but only just because Matteo Drudi was right with him, and the margin at the end, Ferrazza to Drudi, 13 thousandths of a second in Silver Cup. Gerhardt Ferrazza wins the Silver Cup ahead of Matteo Drudi on the line, but like I say, 13 thousandths of a second being the margin. So to confirm the way they came across the line, it's a win, finally for SMP Racing. Miguel Molina, Mikhail Alyoshin and Davide Rigon take the win ahead of Phil Keane, Giovanni Venturini and Franck Pereira. Third, Dries van Thor, Ezekiel Perez, Compank and Alex Riberas ahead of Romain Dumas, Sven Muller and Mathieu Jaminet fourth in the Porsche. Jack Hawksworth, Dev Gore, Lewis Williamson recover for fifth place. And sixth goes to Andrea Caldarelli, Dennis Lind and Marco Mappelli after that late race incident. Let's go join John Watson. Mikhail. I can't see a happier team in the pit lane than you guys. Yeah, I mean, we've been working for this for two years. Can you imagine? Last year, uh, we had uh, many opportunities to be on this position, but uh, something was always wrong. And today, we put everything together. And uh, thanks to SMP Racing and thanks to my teammates, David and uh, Miguel, the team did a great job. Thank you. Miguel, I mean, Fantastic team effort. It wasn't easy. This was a tough victory, but finally, finally, this car's on the winner's podium. Yeah, finally, we could achieve what we really wanted from three years already, uh, winning the Blampeng Endurance with these guys, uh, SMP Racing, uh, Michael and Davide. It's really, really good for for all of us. Uh, we were, we have been working really hard uh, during this this time, and at the end. Today we could make it. Davidi, that was a tough stint. Finally, finally, you find your way past the Lamborghini. You worked hard, but what did you ever think it was going to happen? I mean, they was faster on the straight line and the high speed corner, they were faster. Actually, in the beginning, I catch them and then uh, I lose uh, all my grip from the tires. I was uh, actually not that faster, so I need to try everything. I tried a few times uh, and he, I think, uh, 13, but I was not able to pass him. And then in the end, uh, I see once more hole, I go, now I go. So uh, very, very happy because in the end, uh, we deserve this. Uh, since Monza, very unlucky, since two years, I have to say thank to, to all the team, all the SMP racing, of course, a Ferrari for uh, this victory. So happy and happy birthday to my father and a happy mom fest. Ciao, ciao. Hi. Nice, well done. Thank you. So there are the winning drivers with a very happy AF Corsa team taking this victory. Marco Mappelli then with Dennis Lynn and Andrea Calderelli have a one point lead over Mikhail Alyoshi and Miguel Molina uh, in the championship. Davide Rigon along with uh, his two co-drivers, 25 points, and Klaus Bakler, Zayed Ashkanani and Andrea Rizzoli also on 25, thanks to their success at Monza. But Mappelli, Lynn and Calderelli with that one point advantage. So, our winning drivers at Silverstone, Mikhail Alyoshin, Miguel Molina and Davide Rigon. There are the winning drivers, trophies for the AF Corsa team behind at the uh, SMP Racing Squad. The team's trophy will go as well. Stefan Rattel arrives with the overall checks, 15,000 euros per third, as the Silverstone victors can celebrate. And as the drivers pose, the champagne is at their feet, and that means that the celebrations at Silverstone are underway. Great win for Ferrari, for SMP Racing, for Miguel Molina, for Mikhail Alyoshin, and for Davide Rigon.
from Silverstone, from John Watson and David Addison. Thanks for your company at the end of a great race, and we'll see you in France next time out. It's goodbye for now.